It's uh, interesting. Uh, when, when Kathy's cooking, she calls it making or cooking. I call it building. Whatever I do, I'm building something. So uh, anyway, um, what we're building today is a pea soup. Uh, but what we're using is a smoked pork jowl. So uh, what I'd like to talk about today, and I want to get into the history, is a wee bit of history about the frugality of our pioneers living in the 1700s. And, and that saying, waste not, want not, well, that's a that's a um, Benjamin Franklin quote, and uh, I think it was in 1732 he wrote, this is a reproduction of the book, and it's called the Poor Richard's Almanac, and you know, all his quips. I, I think the guy w woke up in the morning saying, what quote could I make today that people are going to quote two or three hundred years from now? Um, so a penny saved is a penny earned, a stitch in time saves nine. But waste not, want not is my thought uh, pattern today, if you would, so I'm going to get this pork gel cut up. So that's the cheek of the pig. I'm going to talk about pigs. I'm going to talk about frugality. I'm going to talk about archaeology. So we're going to cover all that, but I got to get this cooking up. I'm going to cook the onions with it. We're going to add it to the peas and uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about the recipe too, but uh, uh, we have a good friend, Justine Dorn, and she's got a YouTube channel called Early America and she's does these amazing things in an open fire, uh, historically correct recipes. And I think she they were called receipts back in the day. Anyway, unlike hers, our recipe is some peas, some water. If it's it, too, too thick, more water. If it's too thin, more peas. And um, yeah, whatever. We throw in all the fixings. So Kathy's been to the root cellar this morning. We got this ready to boil, and we're going to get this fried up. So I got my smoked pork jowl uh, frying up here with the onions. Uh, Kathy's got the, the soup made up and we're going to add that all together and I think it's going to be a pretty hearty, hearty meal tonight. Um, but if you think about, uh, if you think about our ancestors, they, um, they didn't waste not want not, back to that saying, they, they couldn't afford to. We're talking about a time period where very few people had actual currency, so it was a barter system. And one of the things that most of them raised on the frontier were pigs. Uh, but they couldn't afford to feed them all winter long, so they would barter them off um, as the fall got closer. But they'd take one hog and they'd fatten that up, and, and that would be their winter's meat. They'd keep some breeding stock, and although pigs are pretty versatile, they can live on just about anything, they can't tolerate cold. So they were able to build a small uh, hutch for them, keep uh, their breeding stock alive through the winter, and have one fattened hog for their food. But they ate all of it. We're talking blood pudding made from the ears and the, and the feet, pork hocks. Uh, they'd boil the tails. And if there's anybody out there who's ever had boiled pigtail, uh, let me know in the comments, because that's one thing, part I haven't eaten. The jowls, the part we're cooking today, comes from the cheek of the pig. Uh, I prefer it over bacon. Uh, it's, it's not salty, it's just smoked. So it has that sort of the same flavor as bacon without all the, uh, the salt that would be added to it normally. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, and get this stirred up here. A wee bit of history or some history by the hearth about the frugality of our ancestors in the 17 and 1800s. So, Frugality was considered one of the um, single most steadfast habits, if you would, of the people in the New World. So when they arrived in New France and the American colonies, they had nothing. They, they virtually had nothing. So it was not only a, a matter of 
they had to be frugal, but they took pride in that frugality. Even those that were affluent were looked down upon if they wasted things. Uh, so we, th we wonder how we know so much about day-to-day -day life of people in that time period. And because very little was written of the common person. So enter the archaeologist. Uh, and in, in the 1700s, it was quite normal for people just to throw their trash out the window or the door into the yard. That was a common trait. And over the years, that trash gets buried in layers of earth. So when archaeologists find these sites, they call them middens. Uh, and they're refuge, household refuge piles. And they start to delve into it. So we can know from certain things. We know in colonial America, almost all the ceramic uh, kitchenware, if you would, came from England. Uh, we know by the design, uh, the type and way that they manufactured this ceramic uh, material, we can, we can date the time. So now we have a time frame. Uh, pipe bowls are another example. Initially, they were very small. Tobacco was very expensive. But as time goes on, uh, pipe bowls got larger, stems got bigger diameter, stems got longer to cool the smoke because tobacco got cheaper. Uh, it, they also had maker's marks. So now we know the time period based on the style of the pipe, um, the shape of the pipe, uh, etc. So we, we glean a huge amount of information from, from these middens. And I find it absolutely fascinating. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of of archaeological pieces that have been identified and labeled. But the most, one of the most amazing ones, and I, and I want to get into it, was a fel fellow by the name of Ephraim Sproul. And his is a fascinating story because they found his house actually um, burnt, burnt down in a catastrophic fire, fire based on the wood charge that they found. But it was hidden. It was hidden underground over, over decades and then centuries. And they found it in a cornfield. And what came out of that is a treasure trove of information about what life was like in the 1700s. Mm. Just got to stir my pork jowls. So a correction, um, Ephraim's uh, surname was actually Sprague, not Sproul. Uh, we know that the house burnt down in 17, around the 1750s. And, and so, so Ephraim, he, he takes his family, he's got eight children, and he homesteads. He builds this on the Hop River area of Connecticut. And we know a lot from public records, so we know where his property was located. We know names, names of children, all that stuff. We know that he was rather an important figure in society, these, these records tell us. So he was the, the deacon of the local church. He was the captain of the local militia. He was a member of the state of Connecticut's legislature. So pretty important man. But from the find of this house, this, this huge um, midden, if you would, we know that they still live very, very frugally. Uh, we know from the finds of uh, material uh, in, in the burned out part of the house that they repaired anything and everything they could. Because what the uh, Sprague family didn't carry in, like tools, dishes, um, I items, guns, firearms, any anything like that, if they didn't carry it in, um, they had to go a long way. So the H Hope River area is a long way from Hartford, Connecticut. And that's where they'd have to go to resupply. So uh, we know from all the bones found in the cellar that they were hunters. So they found bear, a lot of bear bones, deer bones, uh, raccoon, skunk, uh, you name it. If it walked, there were bones there. Uh, they found a barrel of... Um, uh, deer antlers that had been cut into lengths and no doubt intended for the use of tool handles and knife handles and uh, powder measures, things, things of that nature. Uh, pots and pans they found uh, with patches on them with, with rivets of, of thin steel or tin. So yeah, they, they had to live pretty frugally and, and we also know that they sewed their own clothes. So in, in the ashes of this find, they find literally hundreds of straight pins that the, that the mother and their wife and the children of the Sprague family would have sewn all of their own clothing. So it's kind of a little look at back in, in time at, at how frugal things were. And, and I sort of, what, 
what tickles my fancy today is I think what will happen, say, 100 or 200 years from now when they find um, the mid and outside of my house or, or your house, um, what will archaeologists think of their findings from those days? So, as I now suspect, they won't think we're, we were quite as a frugal a society as, this, as the Sprogs were. Anyway, I'm going to mix up my soup now, and I'm getting darn hungry.